and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at using Illustrator brushes without a Wacom tablet. One of the benefits that you'll get with using a Wacom tablet or a tablet input with Illustrator is that you'll get potentially smoother lines. The other thing that you can get is pressure sensitivity. So if you press harder, your lines are going to get thicker. So if you don't have a tablet, let's have a look at some of your options using Illustrator. And luckily with Illustrator, there are plenty of those. The first one is to use the pencil instead of a brush. So I'll select here on the pencil tool and it has a shortcut N. And so you can use the pencil tool to draw with, but before you do, you'll probably want to double click on it so that you can set up the pencil tool options. And one of the things that you will probably want to do is to set it at smooth. Now in earlier versions of Illustrator, there are two settings for fidelity and for smoothness. You'll just want to make sure that smooth is taken pretty much to the topmost value because that will force Illustrator into smoothing out lumps and bumps as you draw. Let's have a look at that. So as I draw the letter L without the smoothness on, you can see that it's pretty wobbly. So let's go and turn the smoothness on and have another shot at it. So the result is really significantly different. When I use the smoothing feature with the pencil tool, I get a line that is really nice and smooth. And so using the pencil tool is a good way of approaching Illustrator if you don't have a Wacom tablet. But the title of this class was using brushes in Illustrator without a Wacom tablet and we just went and used the pencil. Well, the thing is that a pencil line is exactly the same as a brush line is exactly the same as a line that you create with the pen tool. And any one of those can have brushes associated with them. So I'm going to select over this line and if I go to the brushes palette, I can then apply a brush to that line. Let's just increase the size of that. And so I'm getting the benefit of brushes, but drawing potentially with the pencil tool. Now there's another feature that you can use in Illustrator to turn a line into something that looks a bit more like it's had pressure applied to it. And that is these brush profiles. Let me select this line and let's go up here to where it says uniform, because that's hiding brush profiles. So here are the brush profiles. Most of these down to this one here are shipped with Illustrator. Now there are a few that I've added myself and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But let's take a brush profile like this one. And what that does is it applies this profile to the line of your shape. So it's going to be thin at either end and thick in the middle. And depending on how thick you make your stroke, the more obvious that this is going to be. And so if you have nice brush profiles that you can use, then you can get this sort of thick, thin transition in your lines. Now let's have a look at another brush profile, the one that looks like a triangle here. And that has a profile that starts very thick and goes to very thin. Well, that's a nice profile that you can use, but what if it's the wrong way around? What if you wanted this end to be thick and this end to be thin? Well, there's no immediate tool here for reversing the brush profile. But if you go over here to the appearance panel, which you can also get to by choosing window and then appearance, click on the stroke so that you're opening up the stroke window here. Well, there's an option here for flipping the brush profile along the line. So you can always come to the appearance panel and get access to that feature for flipping the profile along a line should you need to do so. Let's go back to the profile that we were using this one here. And let's have a look and see how we might alter these width profiles to work better for us. And you can do this with any line, whether or not it has a brush profile applied to it. So I'll go to the selection tool. I want to make sure that my line is selected. And then I'll come here to what's called the width tool. And this allows us to change the width of a line in various places along that line. So I'm going to target the width tool. And when I hover over this line, in particular, roughly where the middle of this line is, there's a width profile here. I think it might be a bit easier to see if we actually just put it on a line. 
So I have a line here and when I hover over it with the width tool, you'll see that in the very middle of the line is a different sort of anchor point. In fact, this is the width tool. And when I click and drag on it, I can make the line wider at that point. So we get a little selector that is anchored to the line itself and has little points on either side that allow you to adjust the line width. Now these work symmetrically so that when you adjust one, the other one adjusts. But if you don't want them to adjust that way, you can hold down the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac, and you can drag one of them and not the other. Alt or Option drag and you can create a different sort of width profile for your line. Once you've done that, if you want to use that over and over again, you can save it. You'll see that it already appears here in the variable width profile. It's the currently selected profile. If I select another object, the profile that's applied to it shows up in this dialog. But let's go back to the one we just created. If I want to use this over and over again, I can save it. I'll go to the drop down menu here and if the profile hasn't been saved, you'll get a little option here, which is add to profiles. And so I'm just gonna call this custom two and click okay. And it's now saved as a profile that we can use on other shapes. So let me grab this letter L and let's go and find that profile it's here at the bottom, custom two, I'll click on it. And now it's been applied to my letter L. Before we leave the width tool, there are a couple of things I want to show you in relation to that tool. We're gonna to start with just a curved pencil line and it's just an even line, it's one pixel. It has a uniform width all the way along the line. If I go to the width tool and select it, I can now drag on a point in that line. Well, it doesn't have to be an anchor point, it can just be anywhere on the line. And as I drag, the line weight is changed. Now I can do that wherever I want to on the line. If I draw it in, it's going to squeeze up. If I drag outwards, then the line is going to get thicker. Now sometimes it can be difficult to actually locate those points. And what you can do instead is just to double click on a point on the line. Now that can be an anchor point or it can be any position on the line. So if I wanted to do something with this point here, I'll just hover it and double click. And this opens the width point edit feature. And here I can adjust the width of the line at this point using a dialog. So I'm gonna take it up 10 pixels. If I want to, I could also adjust adjoining width points, which would give me a nice smooth line. I don't think it's going to do a lot here, but it certainly would if the line itself had a few bumps in it. You can also adjust one side of the line using this dialog and not the other side of the line. And I'll just click OK. Now having created that point, that width point, you can adjust it manually by clicking on it and then just dragging in on the adjusters or you can double click it to reopen the width point edit dialog. Sometimes using that dialog just makes things a little bit easier than manually adjusting the line widths yourself. Finally, let's consider the situation where you want to remove one of these width adjusters. You'll hover over it with the width tool and then select it. Once selected, you can move it along the line to a new position. If you want to delete it, just click on it so it's selected and press the delete key and then that width point adjuster will be removed from the line. Now brush width profiles can also be used with brushes in Illustrator. Let's go and find another brush to use. I'm going to the artistic brushes and I'm going to choose artistic watercolor and I'll just grab one of these watercolor brushes. I'm going to apply it to my line so I'll select over my shape here and click on it to apply the watercolor brush to it. And I can adjust the width of the brush should I wish to do so. And you'll see it's kicked back here to uniform as the profile. But with my shape selected, I can also apply a custom width profile to that line. So we're applying this brush profile that changes the width of the line to a line that already has a brush associated with it. But you will find that generally changing brushes will remove your brush width profile. So what you want to do is apply your brush 
and then go and make it the size that you want approximately and then apply your width profile. So that if you do it in that order, you'll get the results that you expect to get. Sometimes even with the very best of drawing, you won't get the line that you really want. Let's write out the word love. Now Illustrator has done a pretty good job of smoothing out my lines here, but it's not perfect. And there are a couple of points that I'm concerned about down here and up here. Let's select this line here and we can smooth out that line even though the pencil tool wasn't able to create a smooth curve by using the smooth tool. So I'll click on the smooth tool and now I'll just draw over this part of the line to smooth it out. And Illustrator is going to go from a sharp point into a rounded point. And I can do the same here over on this part of the word and just smooth out those points. And so if you get a 90% perfect line using the pencil tool, then you can adjust certain points on that line should you wish to do so using the smooth tool. Another tool that's handy at this point is the Simplify tool and this allows you to remove excess points from lines and quite often that will give you a smoother result. You'll select over the line or lines that you want to smooth and go to Object and then Path and you'll choose Simplify. At the moment the original path has 44 points but the current version has only 24. So less points typically means that the lines are smoother. You can click here to show the original. You can see what the original looked like and what the new line looked like and quite often that will result in a smoother looking design. And so if you want to select that you can click OK. If you want to work on the line and see if you can get a better result still you can do so using these sliders. And this curve precision I've managed to knock down the number of points considerably and also round out this letter O. So I might like that better. I'll click OK. It's also possible to use the brush tool with some smoothing. Let's go to the brushes panel and let's get a brush to use. This time I'll use one of the Artistic Chalk Charcoal pencil brushes. So let's grab one of these brushes to use. I'm thinking this one will be good. I'll go to the brushes tool because I want to use the paint brush to paint my line. But if I double click it before I use it, you'll see that it has similar settings to the pencil tool. And so you can wind this all the way up to smooth so that Illustrator will smooth out your line as you draw it with the brush associated to it. And exactly the same as you did with the pencil line, if you don't like the line, you can smooth it using the smooth tool. In fact, the brush tool is working pretty much the same way as the pencil tool. It's just that you're able to apply the brush as you go rather than drawing a pencil line and then apply the brush to it after the fact. Now the last feature I want to show you is the calligraphic brushes because they work a little bit differently still. So I have my line here. I'm going to apply a calligraphic brush to it. So let's go to the brush library. I'll choose artistic and artistic calligraphic. These are all shipped with Illustrator and I'm going to choose the 40 point flat brush. So I'll click on it and it's immediately applied to my line. It also appears now in the brushes panel. If I want to make changes to this brush, I need to do it through the brushes panel version, not through that little pop-up that had the brush collection in it. So to adjust this brush for now and into the future in this document, I can double click the brush. If I only want to change it for this particular line, then I can click on this option, which is options of selected object, and it's going to change the brush for this instance only. Now what you see in these drop down list is going to depend on your computer setup. When I drop this down, I get all of these options available. And the reason for this is that I have a Wacom tablet driver installed on this computer, even though I'm not using the Wacom tablet. And if you don't have a tablet driver installed on your computer, you'll find that you only have fixed and random available. Be aware too that there is a current problem with Illustrator that in some cases even if you do have the driver installed these options are not going to be available and that is a known issue. 
but if you don't have a driver installed you'll probably only have fixed and random available. Fixed means that the line angle or the roundness or the size in whichever case you have fixed selected is going to be fixed. It's not going to vary at all and so in this case the angle for the line is 15 degrees. We can adjust that using this slider here and the line will adjust because I have preview turned on or you could drag in here to adjust the angle of the line. If you choose random then you can select a variation amount. So for example if I have it set to 30 degrees, let's just make it 30 degrees and I have a variation of 20 then it can vary from 10 degrees to 50 degrees. We're going to take 20 from 30 that'll give us 10. We're going to add 20 to 30 that'll give us 50. So that will be the range that the angle can take and that's going to work similarly with roundness and size. And in this dialogue here you'll see the sort of middle value and these are the variations in terms of angle, roundness and size. And so we can adjust the roundness to give us a rounder line. And we can adjust the size again with variation and that would give us something that might look a little bit more like a hand drawn line because the size is not going to be 63 points at its thickest, it's going to vary from 53 to 73. And so that'll give us a little bit of variation, something similar to what might happen if we were drawing this with a tablet. So you do have some additional features available if you're using calligraphic brushes. But be aware that even if you have a brush profile set with a calligraphic brush, it's just not going to have any effect on the line at all. I hope this helps you appreciate that even if you're not using a Wacom tablet you can still get many of the benefits of having thick thin lines and nice smooth lines in Illustrator using the tools that are built into Illustrator. I hope you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time my name's Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.